our next speakers are sharing the perspectives of youth in our community, but they don't necessarily reflect their actual individual circumstances. So with that, please join me in giving a warm welcome to our next speakers, who, by the way, are giving their first ever public talk, and they're a little bit nervous, so. You have to hold both. Both? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So like this? Yeah. Do I, I don't want to. Sure. Okay. okay. Like, hello. Um, okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. In the eighth grade, I finally got a cell phone. I was so excited. Everyone else in my grade had a phone. I finally felt like I blended in with all the kids in my school. But the reason why I got a cell phone was not because my mom wanted to keep tabs on me, thinking I was going to parties or doing drugs. It was because my mom wanted me to be safe and know our plan if she ever got detained by immigration. This is the daily life of the kids of immigrants that nobody knows about. There are about 11 million undocumented immigrants living in the US and there are 4.5 million kids who have at least one parent who is undocumented. Undocumented means somebody who was born in another country but does not necessarily have the immigration permission to live in the U.S. In our daily life, watching the news, we hear and we see stories about kids like us whose families are being torn apart. Even kids whose parents aren't even undocumented have to worry. Because in America today, anybody who is an immigrant is assumed to be undocumented, especially those who are of a certain skin tone and ethnicity. This gives us a feeling of paranoia and makes us worry about what might happen to our family. Next page. Just imagine, your mom goes to Target to pick up some bananas and then suddenly she's being chased by bald men in cars and she's running around like a mouse trying to, be, trying to avoid being snatched up by a cat. This is the reality we have to deal with. We need to change that reality. Okay. No. <laughs> yeah. This is something we're not addressing in our community. We go to school and people don't really understand that we're worrying about our friends and families during our math classes and sports practices. But this is our reality. <laughs> we're always on alert. For us, we don't get to be regular teenagers in America because we're the children of immigrants. Now, this is the part of the talk where we're supposed to tell you how to fix this issue. But we sat for over an hour and we couldn't come up with any solutions because this is not an easy problem to solve. So at the, beginning of our, so at the end of our talk, in the remaining time that we have left, we want to invite you, the community, to help us com come up with some solutions. <laughs> uh, we have two starting points. Uh, first, our age needs opportunities to have the space to talk about the issues that are affecting them. We are a part of lots of spaces in our community that do just that, such as the Wicker Teen Group. But it can't be just kids like us who have these conversations. Across Ann Arbor, there are kids who have a lot of privileges and opportunities, and they also need to learn that life is about more than Snapchat and the, school at, and the drama at school. If these, ki if these kids knew what it felt like to live in our shoes, perhaps when they grow up to be adults, they can approach social problems with empathy instead of sympathy. Perhaps as future leaders, these youth can be inspired to take action rather than focusing on their immediate needs. Because they've met and learned about kids like us, the children of immigrants. Thank you for your time. We are an organization that um, meets um, every other weekend, week, and uh, we talk about issues in the community and coming up with um, solutions to those problems. <laughs> oh, it stands for the um, Washtenaw Interfaith Coalition for Immigrant Rights. Any other questions? <laughs> no. No one? Okay. Okay. Thank you. I guess. Yeah. That was a good one. Yeah.